What exactly might the world's first full hybrid luxury compact car be like? Lexus's CT200H offers us the answer, a classier, saintlier, eco-friendly alternative to diesel versions of compact premium Audi A3 and BMW 1 Series sized hatchbacks. Saving the planet in style just became a whole lot more affordable. Though Lexus has fully embraced hybrid technology on its priciest models, Japanese brand took a long time to get round to offering it at the more affordable end of its lineup. A little strange given the drive for more eco-friendly modes of power in the compact luxury sector. Other makers satisfy this with diesel engines, as indeed does Lexus in its BMW 3 Series sized IS saloon. But rumbly, smoke-belching diesels with their clogged up particulate filters and high NOx emissions aren't really what this Japanese brand is all about. Silent, frugal, petrol-electric hybrid power is a much better fit, and that's exactly what's delivered by this car, the CT200H. Now, CT stands for Compact Tourer. Lexus speak for Premium Hatchback. The kind of car you'll hopefully recognise when I talk of models like BMW's 1 Series, Audi's A3, Mercedes A-Class, maybe even Alfa Romeo's Giulietta. Cars that are no bigger than Focus or Astra sized, but sit a world apart when it comes to perceived driveway cred. And just as Toyota's Prius Hybrid uh, waves the eco-driven petrol electric banner for focused folk, so this Lexus borrows its mechanicals to offer the same alternative for executives who'd normally opt for the smallest diesel version of something posh and Teutonic. Let's check it out. If you haven't tried the hybrid driving experience, then a bit of adjustment will be needed, but not too much. Press the power button on the dash and the virtual silence you get is very different to the grumbly, ugly engine note that you'd get from this car's direct diesel competitors. That's because at speeds of up to 28 miles an hour, this car in theory at least is supposed to automatically operate in EV mode under electric power alone. Now, unless you're pretty heavy footed, the engine isn't supposed to cut in until after that point. But in practice, I've found that it usually does. So it's useful to find that as long as your batteries are fully charged, that you can set the car to operate solely in milk float mode by pressing this EV button on the dash. Once that's done, you can simply glide silently along until your battery charge is spent or until you exceed the 28 miles an hour barrier or the operating range. The ability for the hybrid engine to run just in electric mode, or indeed just petrol powered, as well as the two working together in tandem, is what distinguishes the higher tech so-called parallel hybrids that Toyota and Lexus make from those offered by, say, Honda. Now, that makes it even more imperative that the battery charge is kept continually uh, topped up, a process that you can help with by making sure the car reclaims as much energy as possible through regenerative braking. Now, you can optimize that process by remembering to snick the neat chromed trimmed gear stick of the six-speed CVT automatic gearbox that all CT200H models must have by remembering to snick it from D into B when you're driving. When it is time for the petrol engine to cut in, the transition is almost seamless and it's something that you can follow via the uh, neat energy monitor that's uh, displayed on the colour screen that rises up out of the centre of the dashboard and there's a simpler version of that diagram displayed uh, below the fuel gauge on the instrument panel. It shows what's being driven by or what's being charged by what at any given time. This brings me to the engine, which despite all this talk of electric power will remain this car's primary source of propulsion through everyday use. It's exactly the same 1.8 litre VVTi unit you'll find in Toyota's Prius and contributes uh, 99 brake horsepower to the 82 brake horsepower already delivered by the electric motor, though never at the same time which is why, slightly confusingly, this car's total power output is quoted at 134 brake horsepower. 
Once you're up and running with battery and petrol power chipping in and out, Lexus says that this CT200H has been engineered to perform in two distinct driving modes, uh, relaxing and dynamic, depending on uh, the selection you make from this center drive controller. If you're not especially in a hurry, you'll probably have it set in normal, by which the engine will take over from the battery as and when needed. But given that you're not in a hurry, um, it might be better to switch it to Eco, which restricts the throttle openings and optimizes the air conditioning in search of better fuel consumption. Driving in uh, such a relaxed way really suits this car's character best. And um, if you are uh, really approaching your drive in a laid-back form, then you'll enjoy standards of cabin refinement that really are very high, thanks to the electric motor and really impressive cabin insulation. Now, the result of all that uh, are standards of refinement only about four decibels away from those you'd enjoy in, say, a Rolls-Royce Ghost. But you'll also be wanting to know about this car's dynamic repertoire and that last sport setting. This, after all, is a design that must compete with agile Audi A3s and brawny BMW 1 series models. A tough ask for a rebodied Toyota Prius, never designed for such antics, even if, uh, in this case, it does sit on an all-new platform. Especially since all CTs must use uh, a resolutely unsporting six-speed CVT automatic gearbox that lacks trendy paddle shifters. Still, switch to Sport, and this Lexus does its best, transforming the instrument backlighting from blue to red, and switching the hybrid power indicator on the left of the instrument cluster um, into a rev counter in an attempt to match your mood. More importantly, uh, you also get 150 volts of extra electric motor power, good enough to enable you to get from rest to 60 in 10.3 seconds. Uh, as the engine revs are held longer, the steering and throttle response is sharpened, and the uh, stability and traction control systems rendered less intrusive. That uh, 0 to 60 time is only about a second slower than you'd find in a BMW 118D or Audi A3 2 litre TDI. It all sounds quite promising, especially as it's matched by a brilliant low-set cockpit-like driving position and firm, supportive, sporty seats. However, the Lexus engineer's attempts to distance this car from its Prius donor model mean that you also get a rather over-firm set of suspension responses to go with it. And that's something that, unfortunately, there's no magic button on the dashboard to change. Of course, this does mean that the CT turns into corners very neatly with minimal body roll, but the unsettled ride that can sometimes go with it might not be quite what you are expecting from a Lexus even if you specify the top model with clever lateral body dampers intended to filter out structural shocks from the body shell. Um, you, the engine won't give you the kind of torquey response that you'd get from most diesels either. And like most CVT gearboxes, this one can get a bit thrashy when you're trying to power on through the ratios. To be fair, little of this will be much of a problem on this smooth motorway journeys that will probably occupy owners or, or over the majority of their mileage. It's here that the light steering becomes a boon rather than a drawback. It's here too that you can appreciate the peerless refinement and the beautiful cabin. This is where this car comes into its own. Lexus talks of the shape of this CT being the latest interpretation of their L finesse design language. Now, if that's true, then it's a very different interpretation from any we've seen before, most notably with the sharp and shapely IS Saloon. Now, the existence of that car meant that this one had to be a five-door hatchback uh, to avoid product conflict. A very an uh, unfamiliar shape for Lexus, and one that some observers feel could do with a bit more L finessing. That said, it's clearly a quality product, well thought out in detail, beautifully finished, and one that you'd be proud to have in your driveway. And proud to sit behind the wheel of. Let's be clear about this. The cabin of this car embarrasses those of premium German rivals to a considerable degree. 
the price adjusted equipment saving that you'll enjoy over a say a rival BMW 1 series or Audi A3 may well mean that you can afford to specify leather but even if you can't you'll find it fitted above the instrument binnacle and along the sides of the centre console nicely stitched and tactile to the touch complemented by aluminium inserts and carefully crafted soft plastics. I love the cockpit like feel of the low set perfectly sighted driving position and the way that all the controls fall neatly to hand and operate with a quality click even the clever mouse control that operates the seven inch color uh, multi-information display screen that glides up and down in the center of the dashboard. £25,000 doesn't often mean much in terms of real luxury anymore but it does here. But I haven't yet touched upon practicality something you'd expect to be compromised by the need to find somewhere to store the hybrid systems nickel metal hydride battery pack. Now as it turns out clever packaging of this unit between the rear wheels means that it doesn't really compromise boot space. The uh, 375 litre capacity here if you include this underfloor storage compartment actually being better than that of a BMW 1 series and if you push forward the 60 40 split folding rear seats you can free up 985 litres of total space. As for rear seat room well if you're tempted to complain then you clearly haven't sat in the back of a rival BMW 1 series or Audi A3 very recently. Now though this Lexus has a high waistline which restricts the cabin airiness somewhat uh, it does offer slightly more passenger space than either of those two with decent room for two adults back here as long as they're not too tall and space at a pinch for three. Now CT200H models offer pricing likely to see you paying somewhere in the 24 to 31,000 pound bracket for the single five door body style on offer. At the bottom of the range that positions this car at only about a thousand pounds less than Lexus's diesel powered IS200D saloon and it'll be interesting to see which devoted fans of the brand prefer. But of course this model's toughest opposition is going to be Germanic. Automatic versions of uh, say a BMW 118D SE or an Audi A3 Sportback 2 litre TDI SE 140PS well they're going to be uh, priced pretty comparably with this car though if uh, you don't want the automatic gearbox that you must have with this hybrid Lexus and you opt for the Audi or the BMW manual gearboxes then you'll save around 1500 to 2000 pounds on its price uh, and you'll save even more if you go for something like Alfa Romeo's Giulietta 2 litre JTD M2 but that of course doesn't tell the whole story if you were to equip say the BMW 118D SE to this Lexus's level even an entry level form you'd need to add about £1700 to the price. Now whichever CT200H model you choose you should find it to be pretty well equipped. 17 inch alloy wheels, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, USB compatibility for the stereo and rain sensing wipers would all cost you extra on a comparable BMW 1 series or Audi A3. Plus there's rear privacy glass, a decent quality CD stereo, a leather covered steering wheel, dual zone climate control and window glass designed to reduce UV glare. It is a bit surprising to find satellite navigation standard only on the priciest model but to be fair it's quite some system driven by a unique mouse control. Safety wise a five star Euro NCAP showing is justified by the inclusion of no fewer than eight airbags including knee protection for both driver and front seat passenger. Plus it goes without saying that this Lexus has the full complement of electronic assistance for uh, traction, stability and braking. You'll need to pay extra though for Lexus's preemptive PCS pre-crash safety system which radar monitors the road ahead for potential hazards. If one should threaten then it warns the driver, it pre-tensions the seatbelts and it can even automatically help with braking. 
is packaged up with Lexus's ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System, which uses the same gadgetry to help maintain a safe distance to the cars ahead. Cost of ownership is where this CT200H can really hurt its conventionally powered rivals. True, you'll need to take the quoted official combined fuel consumption figure of 68.9 miles to the gallon with a bit of a pinch of salt. It's achievable, but not in the real world. But even given that, you should be quite satisfied with fuel returns that are at least the equal of the best of its conventionally diesel-powered rivals. And you can monitor how you're doing both in real time and across recent history via the displays that you get on this uh, multi-information screen on the top of the dashboard. Also, throw in the fact that this is the only premium executive car with automatic transmission to qualify for exemption from the London congestion charge and what's likely to be snail-like rates of depreciation and the running costs package looks even more compelling. It also helps that the Lexus hybrid drive system has low maintenance requirements built in. So there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong, no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes, and of course, thanks to the CVT automatic gearbox, no clutch either. The regenerative braking also helps to extend the life of the brake pads, which uh, have a life on average of around 70,000 miles. Now the parallel hybrid technology employed here might be fairly conventional. We're on the cusp of a transition to uh, plug-in lithium-ion batteries. But that's probably a good thing, as it's fully proven and here covered by a five-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Certainly good enough to deliver an astonishing CO2 figure of 96 grams per kilometer. That's about 20 to 25 grams per kilometer better than a directly comparable BMW 118D or Audi A3 2 liter TDI. And if you're more accurately considering the automatic versions of those cars as competitors, uh, then the saving is sort of 35 to 45 grams per kilometer. It's massive. Now, that, of course, enables you to claim zero road funds license tax, but more important is the way that these figures enable this Lexus to deliver rock bottom company car tax. And since this is one of the car's greatest draws, I need to elaborate. A 10% benefit in kind company car tax rating compares with 13% for a rival uh, BMW 118D or Audi A3 2 litre TDI, or between 18 and 21% if more accurately you compare the CT to these German competitors in their automatic diesel guises. Now that means, according to Lexus's figures based on an entry-level CT200H model, that you could be looking at a three-year benefit-in-kind tax saving of, well, over £2,300 compared to a rival auto diesel Audi A3, and over £3,300 compared to a rival auto diesel BMW 1 series. That's as much as nearly uh, £90 a month. If you further add to those savings the impressive fuel consumption from cheaper petrol fuel, the high residuals, the low maintenance and repair costs, and this model's 100% right down against corporation tax, the picture looks even rosier. Lexus reckoning that for businesses choosing this model as a fleet car, the savings over three years and 60,000 miles could be well in excess of £7,000. Before this car arrived, the UK market's provision of hybrid power was limited to compact cars and rather large ones. With this CT200H, Lexus has neatly plugged the gap in between, and on paper, its promised combination of driving fun and eco-sensibility seems a tempting one. In practice, this car is somewhat restricted by the limits of its Prius mechanicals, but that doesn't stop it delivering a package that will still be compelling to many target buyers. True, a BMW 1 Series or Audi A3 would be better to drive, but spec adjusted, both would cost you more to buy, be noisier to live with, confine you to nastier cabins, and cost a whole lot more to run on pricier fuel. To me, the limits of this Lexus seem a fair exchange in return for all these benefits. This car adds up on the balance sheet and in your driveway.